Welcome, I am your Geek Archaeologist, and today I am reviewing Medieval Lives by Terry Jones. You might recognize the name Terry Jones, it may sound somewhat familiar, but maybe not from like history, more of like from comedy. That's right, it's that Terry Jones, uh, the Monty Python member, who is also a noted medievalist. He did a BBC series called Medieval Lives, and this is the book accompanying it that kind of goes into more detail. And this is the thing um, about this book. It is basically intended to correct a lot of the misconceptions and misunderstandings people have about medieval life. People see it as this incredibly oppressive, dirty, smelly time where um, um, uh, it was just miserable all the time. And the people at the time didn't seem to think that. Um, they were actually pretty content with their lot. Uh, in the way things were structured, and there's a lot of useful information in here about how things actually were. Um, one of the more interesting things is this idea, and he, he goes to some length to explore the idea that the Middle Ages were kind of this trough of human civilization, that basically things were great in Roman times, and then terrible in medieval times, and backwards, and, and all sorts of lost technology, and then we kind of got better in the Renaissance. Um, but when you look at things uh, at, at the historical record, actually things progressed from the Roman Empire to the Middle Ages, you know, some things were lost, but um, some things were improved. Many things were improved. Um, and then when the Renaissance came along, they kind of, when Renaissance thinkers kind of described the Middle Ages as bad and wrong in contrast to what they were suggesting for the Renaissance. So uh, uh, the medieval world became kind of a boogeyman in Renaissance times, far out of proportion to what it was actually like. Um, and here's the thing. One of the things this... this does is it helps to really humanize a part of history a lot of us don't know much about. Um, or worse, we have misunderstandings about through popular culture. A lot of movies set in the Middle Ages have no idea what they're talking about, and they present it in this very, you know, um, incorrect way. For example, they had plenty of ways of dyeing fabrics. They had plenty of colorful dyes. People did not wear drab colors all the time, especially if you were, say, a king or a queen, um, or even a lord. You know, people, in, in, uh, back on people, generally wore bright colors, because you could. It wasn't, you know, that, that wasn't hard to do. Um, certain colors were expensive and hard to find, but in general, like, it wasn't this drab time. Um, uh, it also talks a lot about how things were done. So it is divided into, um, basically, let me see here, it's, uh, eight chapters. Uh, peasant, minstrel, outlaw, monk, philosopher, knight, damsel, and king. And, again, each one is basically trying to attack one aspect of medieval culture. Um, you know, peasant lives and how, how things actually got done. One of the things that always confused me is this whole idea of, like, law and justice. And if something went wrong, if, if a crime was committed, what happened? Well, you find out here. Um, you know, there are no police, right? How does that work? Um, outlaw deals with that also in, in quite a bit of detail. Think, you know, there are statues to Robin Hood, who was a criminal. How many statues can you think of that are erected to somebody who was, you know... An outlaw. Kind of interesting. Um, monks. Monks were often incredibly wealthy, or at least their monasteries were. Um, when you have all of these things, um, when, when, when you have... When society basically believes in certain tenets, like thou shalt not kill, but you also have a lot of knights who go off and kill people, this creates a problem. And one of the ways you solve that problem, if you're a knight, is that you spend a lot of money establishing a monastery who will pray for your soul and kind of absolve you of those sins that you committed in killing all those people off in the Holy Land. Um, but, of course, what you want to do is you want to find the least, um, the least of the monks, the least of the monasteries you can find, and kind of raise it up. So monasteries were constantly getting these huge castrations and using them. And of course, monks are people too. And uh, some of them, you know, became monks for less than completely pure reasons. Some of them were running away or some of them, you know, were just trying to, were, were, were looking for a change of life or needed a change of life. 
And so a lot of them, you know, twisted the rules a little bit and made it a little less, um, a little less difficult than the laws would have you believe. So, for example, one of the laws of, of St. Benedict, I believe, was that uh, monks should not eat meat unless they're in the infirmary. Because, you know, if you're sick and recovering, you need, you know, need some hearty, hearty protein. Uh, they could eat beans and other forms of protein, nuts and such, but uh, only meat in the infirmary. So some monks moved into the infirmary and thus ate meat all the time, right? Um, a lot of, of priests were married. Even though they weren't supposed to be, that was a thing that just people did anyway. Um, it, was, it was considered one of those things, it was kind of like a, you know, a traffic violation. Where it's like, okay, maybe technically I'm not, not, not supposed to do this, but I don't see like, you know, it's, it's kind of church doctrine, but not necessarily biblical doctrine. That's kind of weird. Um... But uh, so you get a lot of, uh, about that, a lot about knights and what knights were actually supposed to do and what they did during the rest of the time, right? Um, Damsel also just talked about how women were treated and their roles in society. And, um, you know, much of what you hear is not wrong in the main, but wrong in a lot of the details, right? About how women were treated and how women were works and what they could or couldn't do in society. There's actually, women had... Um, there are records of women having a lot more flexibility and a lot more power than the sort of common uh, record or, the, you know, the, the common assumption would be. Where it's like, yes, there were these laws in place, but there are ways around them that women did use. So, uh, and, and again, not to say that, oh, everything was great for women in the Middle Ages, but saying it's, it's more complicated than that. And there was a lot more going on than you would uh, uh, come to believe. And then again, what's the role of the king? And what does the king do? And why is he there? Uh, and what actually happens? So that is um, really, really helpful. And it's written by um, Terry Jones and other people helped him with this. So it wasn't just, I'm sure he didn't write every single word. Um, he had other people helping with research and so forth. Um, but what what's great about it is it comes with his sense of humor. This book is not meant, and it's one of the really nice things, is that he could have easily turned this into sort of a farcical, comedical look, or comedic look at history. There's, you know, jokes all the time. He doesn't do that. This is a book about the time, but filtered through um, the mind of somebody who can present these things in a fun manner. So he has a, a really clever turn of phrase and a rather sarcastic look at things, uh, which is very welcome but still you know, uh, rooted in a tone that is practical and pragmatic and understandable, which is very, very helpful. Um, so that is um, Medieval Lives. I believe it's only available in hardback. There might be paperback, but I only saw hardback when I went looking for it. It's not hugely expensive. I think it was in the range of 20 bucks or so online. Um, and so if you're interested in this, especially if you're interested in like fantasy gaming, uh, fantasy tabletop gaming, and what life was was like. Um, this is really useful if you want to, say, write a fantasy novel um, or write a story in a fantasy world, um, and you want to be able to answer certain questions about how society that society would have actually worked. Things that are often glossed over in fantasy stories. You won't necessarily copy medieval society exactly, but this can really help you structure it well. So that is Medieval Lives. Hope you found that useful. Um, and if you have any questions about it, feel free to post it in the comments and I will try to get to those. And um, until next time, I, I, I will have more reviews then and I hope to see you then.